Why, hello there. It's Cara, producer and your host of the Wedding Planning Podcast. This week, we're talking all about tips for hosting your backyard wedding. Now, small, intimate backyard weddings have been steadily rising in popularity over the past years. With the COVID pandemic crisis that struck in March of this year, the good old backyard has become the number one choice of couples who still want to celebrate but may not have access to traditional venue spaces. If you're a longtime listener of the Wedding Planning Podcast, then you know how in love I am with a small, simple, and intimate wedding celebration, so the backyard venue has always been a favorite of mine. Today I'm sharing with you a show that was ironically conceived prior to the coronavirus disaster of 2020, but the tips and red flags we cover in this show are more relevant now than ever. Now, of course, if you're listening in the summer of 2020 and you're planning a celebration for the coming months, you will absolutely need to be mindful of current COVID restrictions in your area and public health advisories, which I don't cover in detail in this show because they change by the hour and vary so greatly depending on where you live and where you plan to celebrate. So again, this episode does not specifically address COVID-19. If you have questions about your wedding celebration and the coronavirus, you'll want to join us in the Wedding Plan B workshop series, which you can access for free by visiting weddingplanb.com. I hope you love this week's show all about backyard weddings, and I hope you'll feel free to share it with a friend who would love it as well. Ready? Let's do it. There is this really common misunderstanding in the wedding planning world that doing things yourself is always a good way to save money. Now, I get it. Trust me, I do. In some situations, you might have more time than money and a cheap and easy DIY project makes perfect sense. But we have to be careful in drawing a line between a few manageable, simple projects that make perfect sense and biting off more than we can chew on the flip side. So there's a lot of gray area in the middle. If you're not careful, you can risk finding yourself in a spot of pure overwhelm and chaos. On today's episode, we're going to explore eight red flags to carefully consider when hosting your wedding at a residential property like a backyard or a rental home. Our conversation today is a perfect lesson in creating boundaries as you plan between what you can realistically handle yourself, what should be left to a paid professional, and how to rearrange your priorities if you're stuck feeling like the cheapest possible DIY route is your only option. Now, I can immediately think of some pretty obvious pros of hosting your wedding at a family property. Sentimentality, cost control, flexibility come to mind right away. Getting married on the ranch where you grew up or the farm where you spent a ton of time as a child, or maybe just the home that your parents live in today, is a really meaningful and a really natural place to celebrate one of the best, most important days of your life. And as many of us have discovered, renting a traditional wedding venue is a huge investment. So to have a venue, an option that's free, and I'm using air quotes around free, we'll get to that, That can initially seem like a complete no-brainer. And then, of course, if your wedding is at your parents' home or even at a rented vacation property, you're likely going to have a lot of flexibility in terms of setup, cleanup, and maybe even extending the festivities over a three-day wedding weekend. This all sounds great, right? (laughs) Sign me up. Well, not so fast. If it was that easy, then everyone would have backyard weddings and there wouldn't be any disastrous stories of ballooning out of control budgets due to unexpected costs, 
overflowing garbage cans, dirty, overcrowded restrooms, unexpected weather, rain, mud, heat, and a myriad of other concerns that we're going to review today. So we're going to walk through eight red flags to be aware of if you are set on this type of venue. And I'll say now, if you hear within these eight, one or two or three that apply to your situation, I am not suggesting that you should not have a backyard wedding, not at all. Everything is very individualized and very unique from wedding to wedding. No two couples are exactly the same. We're just having the conversation to make you aware of the things that you need to get a handle on before you go all in and commit to doing a backyard wedding. I'm going to share with you a really classic listener note that sums up three of the red flags that we're going to cover. Hi there, I'm really struggling with my fiance's wish to host our wedding in his parents' backyard. I'm truly concerned with the spacing as he has a very large guest list. I'm also very worried about the planning process because his parents live in California and we live in Kansas. He's convinced that we can cut several costs and corners versus a more traditional venue. I'm sure that we can control costs better. Do you have any tips and must-do lists when considering a backyard wedding? I have a lot of tips, (laughs) so let's walk through the main concerns from this note and five additional things to watch out for if you're considering hosting a backyard wedding. This episode is for and about you, and I'm touching on all the points that I've collected from various listeners over the past few weeks and months with respect to hosting a backyard, a tent, or rental property wedding. Okay, the first red flag here that we're going to talk about is that you are doing this primarily to save money. You're choosing a, quote, free venue, someone's backyard, a friend or family member, and you're doing it primarily to save money. Now, if you caught our episode from a few months back, it's called When Trying to Save Money on the Wedding Backfires. The date on that is October 19th, 2019, if you want to go back and take a listen. If you heard it, you know where I'm going. (laughs) I'm going to make a really long story short by saying that doing it yourself is not always the cheapest and best way. And this could not be more true than in the case of a non-traditional wedding venue where the heavy lifting and most of the planning is left up to you. Yes, don't get me wrong. There are a ton of opportunities to control the cost of food and drinks. And of course, the rental of the venue itself. If you're in full control of all this being set up at a home or in a backyard. On the contrary, there are a ton of extra considerations that you need to keep in mind, and those can all easily add up and exceed the cost of a reasonably priced venue. So we're talking about things like table and chair rental, tent rental, transportation and parking, hiring additional staff to serve and bus tables, who's going to serve all those drinks, who's going to clear out the plates when people are done eating, who's going to empty the trash, who's going to maintain the restrooms. That's a lot of staff. And when you're working with a traditional venue, all those people are already there. They already work there. It's done for you. But when you're doing it in a backyard and you need to bring in all of that extra help, those are not jobs that you want your family and friends doing on your wedding day. So that's a huge consideration. Now, if you're game, if you're you're good, you're cool, you're game to tackle the challenge, I would suggest reviewing the past episodes on the Wedding Planning Podcast. We've done a ton on DIY catering, on the importance of having a designated point person or a professional day of coordinator to keep you organized, mapping out your wedding floor plan, hiring additional staff, dialing in your wedding budget. I could go on and on. That's just to name a few. Go back in the feed and find some of the shows that are going to apply to you if you're going to host in a backyard and all a lot of that heavy lifting is going to fall onto you. So it's very important that you know what you're getting into here. 
to look at something like this and think, oh my gosh, it's free. Yes, we got to do that. That's just a recipe for lots of trouble down the road. All right, and moving on to our next red flag, not having enough space. You absolutely have to have enough space to physically host all of your guests or else this is going to be a total flop. Not only do crowded tables and chairs and restroom lines out the door to use two restrooms for 100 people, that makes for just a really uncomfortable and unenjoyable event. And that's not to mention with not having enough space for all of your guests, you could also be breaking laws and regulations about fire safety, noise violations, parking restrictions. With respect to the physical space itself, so like how are you going to fit 20 tables into the dimensions of the backyard, I'm not going to rattle off a bunch of measurements and dimensions. You can find all that information by searching Google. But to summarize this point, if you cannot be 100% certain that you have enough space to work with, then you either need to cut back your guest list or consider another plan. And next concern or backyard wedding red flag is long distance planning. You heard in this note that the couple is in Kansas and the wedding is in California. And I hear from a ton of couples who are planning weddings in another state or in some cases, whoa, imagine this, even another country. And it presents a lot of challenges in terms of booking vendors, making decisions, setting up meetings, and I mean, literally everything. It just makes things a lot more difficult when you can't be there in person to do this stuff while you're in the same location. So long distance planning is hard enough when you're using a more traditional all-inclusive venue, but to add the extra layer of difficulty in terms of pretty much everything else that you need to be responsible for arranging and coordinating if you're using a venue like a backyard. Just be very sure that you know what you're getting into and ideally you'll have lots of help on the ground in the location where the wedding is actually taking place. You're going to need to lean heavily on those friends and family members who are there. You're going to need a lot of help. And then moving on to red flag number four, This is rocky family relationships. Now, at this point, you've likely experienced at some point during your engagement that tensions can run really high when you combine wedding, family, money, divorce, strong opinions and personalities, new spouses, step parents, on and on and on. I mean, that happens in daily life, let alone throwing a wedding in there. It just complicates everything. If you find yourself in the midst of parents and or step parents or even other family members who just don't get along, be sensitive and really think about, is this a good idea to host the entire wedding you're hosting at one very biased location. So to host it at your dad's house when your mom and dad can't stand each other and your mom and new stepmom can't stand each other and your stepdad and your dad, it's just having that all taking place at your dad's house can be a recipe for a lot of uncomfortable conversations and interactions. Defenses get high and personalities run really hot when All the wedding planning and all the prep is taking place at that non-neutral location. So take stock of your family situation and if tensions run high amongst people, then just proceed with caution and make sure that that's not going to be an issue, that it's happening. The whole wedding is going to be happening at that one place. Next thing to really think about is weather. Weather, so sun, rain. This one's pretty self explanatory. Um, I think we can all agree that no one wants to be at a wedding outdoors when it's freezing cold or when it's 100 degrees in the shade or be huddled under umbrellas or a soggy tent in pouring rain. That just does not sound fun. Do not hope that the weather will work out on your wedding day. Hope is not a plan. 
This is a quote that I've heard a ton of times over the past week or so, and it just applies to so many things, especially in wedding planning. Hope is not a plan. You'll want to have a really solid backup game plan and some options lined up to keep your guests comfortable. So for example, having fans or portable heaters, wraps if it gets chilly, ample shade if it's going to be super hot, all of that stuff needs to be thought about and thought through in advance. Coming up after a quick break, I have three more red flags to be on the lookout for and a handful of your backyard wedding questions. I'll be back in just a couple minutes. Did you know now you can have a photo booth for your wedding that doesn't break the bank? Booth by Mail offers a complete setup delivered straight to your door that allows you to have all the fun and memories of a photo booth at a fraction of the typical price. Booth by Mail photo booths contain everything you need to create memorable moments for your guests. You get a camera, printer, sequin backdrop, props, and a digital photo album, all for under $300. So much fun. Best of all, there are no time constraints. Your photo booth will arrive one to two days before your wedding and you have unlimited use throughout the entire weekend. Use it for the rehearsal dinner, your wedding, and brunch. Booth by Mail is available anywhere in the continental U.S. It's also a great option if your wedding is out of town. Just have it shipped to your hotel or your reception venue. Go to boothbymail.com slash wedding planning podcast for more details or follow Booth by Mail on Facebook and Instagram. And as a special offer to our listeners, enter the code WPP to receive a 10% discount on your order. That website again is boothbymail.com slash wedding planning podcast. Care of is a wellness brand that makes it easy to maintain your health goals with a customized vitamin plan that helps you feel your best today and supports you long term. Care of is focused on the quality, science, and research that goes into each of their products and recommendations and can make taking your vitamins and supporting your health goals attainable. I don't know about you, but for me, the vitamin aisle can be really confusing. It's so hard to know what you need and where to even start. With Care Of, you simply take a short online quiz and answer some questions about your diet, health goals, and lifestyle. Care Of will recommend a list of vitamins and supplements specifically for your health needs and goals. The quiz is so quick and easy, and I love how convenient the individual vitamin packets are. They're perfect for dropping in your purse on the go and for traveling. For 50% off your first Care Of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code WEDDING50. Again, that's 50% off your first care of order when you visit takecareof.com and enter code WEDDING50. Researching and planning an entire wedding in the midst of everything else going on in your life can be a really stressful time. And if you find your happiness is suffering, BetterHelp is here for you. BetterHelp will assess your individual needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. Send a message to your counselor anytime and receive a thoughtful, timely response. You can even schedule weekly video or phone sessions, all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. Licensed professional counselors specialize in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, anger, family conflicts, and more. BetterHelp is committed to partnering you with your perfect therapeutic match, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting counselors in all 50 states. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting BetterHelp.com dot com slash wedding. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's better help, H-E-L-P dot com slash wedding. 
Okay, we're back with three more backyard wedding red flags. Next up, we have residential restrictions. This, my friend, is another great example of that fun little quote, hope is not a plan. It is critical that you understand any residential restrictions that might be in play with respect to noise, parking, group size, or any community resources that you're using. Call the local police department and do your due diligence to understand the rules. Our wedding got busted up by the cops. That's probably not a story that you would be proud to tell your grandchildren 50 years from now. Very, very important to be proactive and get all the information on legal and residential restrictions. And next up, we have lack of time and lack of excitement. I've combined those two into one point. Look, some of us are planners and project managers by nature, or maybe even by professional trade. It is an amazing skill to have. However, (laughs) the task of coordinating a million moving parts when you're finishing a master's degree, you're living away from your fiance, you're working two jobs, and a kicker, you hate paying attention to details, you are not detail oriented, and you really don't like planning things. This might not be the best wedding setup for you. So know yourself and do not be afraid to admit that, hey, you know what? This just does not sound like very much fun and I really don't have the time or energy to sign up for that much work. There's nothing wrong with that. There is no shame in that. You might have to reprioritize things by scaling back on your guest list or cutting back on other details to find a more all-inclusive venue option that you can afford. But please, if there's a little voice in your head saying, this just sounds like it would be really annoying and miserable for the next 12 months of my life, listen to that voice. You will be so grateful that you did. And the last point I saved the most important for last, and it ties back to our very first point about saving money. So this one, this is a huge red flag, is failure to plan and budget for unexpected extra costs. If a backyard venue is something that you're interested in, then I would definitely recommend sitting down together with your fiance and you're going to need to do some very careful research on a lot of things. What you're going to need to look at is your individual situation. So we're talking about the property size. What are you going to need to rent in terms of tables and chairs and all the extras, place settings, dishes, decorations, How many guests are you going to have? What type of food service? How much is catering going to cost? That's not all. I mean, any important details that are going to apply to your situation. If you're going to need to hire valet people to park cars at another parking lot because there's not parking at that location, you absolutely have to make a detailed running list with specific price quotes for everything that I just listed and more. Anything that applies, you need to find out how much it's going to cost. You cannot make a guesstimate. You can't say, I think it might cost $1,000 to rent 20 tables and chairs and place settings. No, no, no. You need hard, concrete numbers. After you've made that list for your backyard venue, Next, I want you, I encourage you, please call around and research some potential venues in your area and do a price comparison. This way you're looking at apples to apples, comparing a quote free backyard wedding venue to a all-inclusive wedding venue that costs $2,000, but hey, the backyard is free. No, it's not. There are a lot of other costs that are going to creep up on you. 
and the failure to plan and budget for those extra costs can make for an absolute implosion of a disaster in terms of how much this is going to cost you. So again, we've come full circle back around to our first point. If your number one goal, your number one reason for doing this is to save money, then you absolutely need to go in eyes wide open, do a ton of research to make sure that it actually is going to save you money. Okay, that was a lot, a lot of points. And let me say really quickly before we get to your questions, if you found one or two or three or maybe even four, four of those things and you're like, oh, no, 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 whoa, that's like four red flags. Maybe we shouldn't do this. I am not discouraging anyone from doing anything that you're really, you have your heart set on. There are workarounds to these red flags. These are not like a definitive, you absolutely should not do your wedding in a backyard if any of these things apply to you. Just to be clear, that's not what I'm saying. I just wanted to have the conversation and wanted to put these things out there so that you can be aware of all the things that you're getting into so that you don't get six months into planning this thing and realize, oh, crap, like we are way in over our heads and this is not free. So that's all I'm trying to do here. And I really, really, really hope it was helpful. And with that, let's get into your questions. First one, someone in my area is reselling tablecloths in a color and size that I want and they would be cheaper than renting. I've heard mixed reviews on trying to DIY tablecloths. Do you have any experience or suggestions on it? Seems like a pain to make sure there are no wrinkles the day of. I have a ton of experience with DIY tablecloths. I did it. I thought it was pretty seamless and it worked out really, really well because we bought them online. We used them for our wedding and then we resold them. I think actually a church bought them from us, a church in the area, and they still use them to this day for events. So it was a win, win, win. Everyone's a winner. It was a great solution for us. So a couple of notes on doing this. When you order them online, obviously they're going to get shipped to you all crumpled up into in little plastic bags. So you're going to need to make sure that you have someone designated. I don't know if that's you. I kind of hope not. If you can find someone else who's willing to take those tablecloths out and either iron or steam them. This is an extra step. This is you're going to likely save a lot of money, but you need to be aware that it's going to require a little bit of muscle work in the day, day or two leading up to the wedding to make sure that they're just not all crumpled up and yucky. Now, uh, I'm a fan of handheld steamers. I use them all the time on clothes. They're perfect for a tablecloth. You can buy them very inexpensive on Amazon. I'll leave a link in today's show notes if you want to check that out and see exactly what I'm talking about. But essentially, if you have someone to steam them out or iron them out, that's what we did. And again, it worked out great for us. And then last word on wrinkles. Um, Imagine, so if you imagine a 10 top wedding table with a tablecloth on top of it, and then keep in mind all the things that are on that table. So you've got a centerpiece and a table number. You've got 10 place settings. You've got condiments. You've got utensils. You've got glasses, water glass, wine glass, cocktail glass, maybe a bottle of wine, a thing of water. There's a lot of stuff on top of the table. So in my humble opinion, if there are a couple of wrinkles in that tablecloth, that to me is not like a game, a deal breaker. Sorry. I think that's totally fine. And I honestly don't think anyone's going to notice. So I hope that was helpful. And I hope that kind of guides your decision making. Next question, backyard wedding, should we hire a day of coordinator? So this listener is considering getting married 
in her dad's backyard. Sorry, I'm paraphrasing here. He has a huge property and I want to ensure that all the space gets maximized in the most efficient and logical way. I've never planned an event before, so I feel like hiring a professional is necessary. My fiance supports me, but he could probably go without as he is not as detail oriented as I am. Is this a situation where it makes sense to have a day of coordinator? It absolutely 100% makes sense to hire a coordinator if you have the budget for it. So a word on a day of coordinator is someone who's likely going to work with you in the final month or so before the wedding. And their primary role is going to be to make sure your timeline is all locked in, to follow up with your vendors last minute. And then of course, to be there on the day of the wedding, to be the primary organizer of the day's events and make sure everything runs smoothly. So you may need, I think what you're looking for is a level up of service from just a day of coordinator. I would really recommend making a bunch of phone calls in your area and having a conversation with some different planners and coordinators and seeing what levels of services they offer. I would be willing to bet that you can easily find someone who's done an event that is comparable in size and scope and can give you some really, really solid advice on exactly how to map out that space in the best way and also probably point you in the direction of a legit rental company and what your options are in terms of tables and cloths and place settings and all that good stuff. So to sum it all up, if you have the budget to invest in a professional coordinator, I would highly recommend it. If that's something that's not in your budget, I do think it's totally doable for you to manage this on your own. Uh, go back to the points we reviewed in the first part of the show, and then the next question is going to have some helpful tips for you as well. And next question, I think I might be narrowing down my venue to an Airbnb that allows events, and this would mean my reception would be more of a backyard tented wedding. I'm all for this idea because I've always loved the pictures on Pinterest of tent setups. However, I would like some tips on how to make this work. I want the day to feel special and not like a regular house party. All great points and a great question. This is one of many that inspired this episode. So thank you so much for sending those in. Now, in terms of tips for making your backyard wedding work, let's kind of summarize everything we've gone over today. I would run back through all those red flags from the beginning of the show and just explore anything that stands out to you as being a potential concern in your situation and then work backwards from there. So if this is something that you're considering doing, maybe you haven't done any research on those residential restrictions yet, or maybe you haven't done a lot of thought about how big your space is and realistically how many tables and people can fit in that space. Maybe you only have one restroom but a hundred guests and you're going to need to explore bringing in portable restrooms which sounds weird I know but they have very nice ones. Um, anyway just running down this mental checklist of all the things that you're going to need to be aware of and plan for. And some other specifics, call around for local tent rental options and get some rental quotes for the tables and the chairs and anything else that you're going to need to rent to set this space up. I think a really good splurge for you could be catering. So to turn up, kind of turn up the volume and make it really special with some gourmet food options. And as you mentioned, this could make the day feel special and not just like a regular house party, like, hey, everyone come over to my dad's yard and we're going to eat hamburgers and drink Corona beer. I mean, <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. That's a really, really valid concern. With that theme of offering some unique gourmet food, we have a couple of listeners who are planning really romantic, beautiful backyard weddings. I mean, they sound stunning. And a few people are incorporating food trucks for a really fun, really unique, and just a non-traditional wedding meal. I love food trucks. I mean, who doesn't love a great collection of food trucks? 
This is such a unique and such an interactive and fun way to treat your guests. So depending on how many people you have, you could have two or three or maybe even four different trucks come in. One could do desserts. The other three could be like three different cuisines, all really fun, different stuff. And then the setup of this can be very casual. It could be belly bars so that your guests can just kind of stand, have a snack and go dance and go grab a drink. You could leave them open for just a really long rolling extended period of time so people can go up, grab something, enjoy it, go back and dance again make it just a really casual setup. So then you've got the best of both worlds. You've got the casual setup of the backyard and the food trucks and the fun casual style of eating, but it's also, it's special. That's a treat. That's really fun. And last step in making this feel really special, I would definitely recommend browsing Pinterest and getting some tent wedding inspiration. Yes, that's a real thing. Go to Pinterest and type in tent wedding inspiration or tent wedding ideas, and you'll find tons of really beautiful and really simple ideas for dressing up that tent and just really elevating the ambiance so that it doesn't feel like a backyard house party. It feels like a really, really special event. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope you loved the show and I hope you'll feel free to share it with a friend or family member who would love it as well. And don't forget to meet me here again next week, same time, same place on July 29th. I have an all new wedding Q&A to share with you with your questions submitted on Instagram. Get those in by visiting me at Wedding Planning Podcast. We'll talk soon. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Wedding Planning Podcast. For a list of any links and resources called out in today's show, take a peek at the show notes in your podcast player whenever you have a hands-free moment. You can also subscribe to receive convenient show recaps via email by visiting weddingplanningpodcast.co. While you're there, you can browse a library of all past episodes and view special offers from our sponsors. That website again is weddingplanningpodcast.co. Thank you so much for including me and the Wedding Planning Podcast in your wedding plans. And I'll talk to you again next week, same time, same place.